So a few weeks ago I did a CFD special on cut bumpers versus diffusers and I got a lot of questions on that because I used a flat floor for my modeling. The X is nice and simple and easy for me. And a lot of people asked, would this be the same effect with a more realistic floor geometry? Now my natural inclination was, well, yes, the command effect will still work. So the flow should still stay relatively following the path of the diffuser. As long as the flow is not too tripped up while it's in the diffuser, it should still show a similar trend to a non-flat floor. But of course, I was intrigued enough by the concept to go and run some numbers and some CFDs on a flat floor and a non-flat floor geometry with and without a diffuser to try and get some numbers and see what was actually happening. Now, for the non-flat floor, the realistic floor model, I used my model from my previous CFD episode on do flat floors work, or more importantly, how effective are flat floors. And I then just applied a sort of generic diffuser geometry. So I'm just gonna quickly run you through what happened. So in addition to the flat and non-flat floors of the previous video, I added a very basic diffuser geometry, just a first guess, very simple, something that a sort of home builder would be making. Um, and then I sort of tested that both with and without a floor. So let's run through some numbers because this is where it gets a little bit interesting. Uh, compared to the baseline case, so just the cut bumper, the non-flat floor, by adding the diffuser, I actually got three kilos or well, four kilos less downforce and four kilos more drag. If I added the diffuser onto the floor, I ended up with 18 kilos less drag from the baseline and 50 kilos more downforce. But it's important to consider that compared to the case where I just had the floor and the cut bumper, uh, we actually lost about a kilo of downforce and we put on three kilos of drag, which was actually quite an interesting thing. The diffuser actually made it worse. Now, when I looked into this, I found that this was actually due to the, uh, the muffler blocking off the rear diffuser center. Um, and as a result, even though I kind of thought I could get away with the sort of baseline geometry to, to just deal with this muffler, uh, it still worked out as worse. So I instead went back and I did a redesign on the diffuser using what I saw in the first round of CFD, just changed its lateral expansion a little bit, and I got much better results. So with the diffuser on and no flat floor, I ended up with an additional 11 kilos of downforce. So that's one fifth of the way to having an entire flat floor just from a, a rear diffuser. And I put on 3.8 kilos of drag, but you know, that's a three or four to one ratio of downforce to drag gain. So we're definitely seeing an efficiency gain here. The key thing is here is that it kind of proved the point of my original video in that you should be able to extract more performance from a diffuser than a cut bumper in all scenarios, as long as your diffuser is designed correctly and working correctly. The redesigned diffuser also showed consistent trends with the old video because the old video said that the cut bumper made a little bit less drag, but it also made a decent amount less downforce. So we're really seeing exactly the same thing with the correctly designed diffuser. You can say what you want about it. it's going to be different with different car geometries, but in reality, they're all kind of the same and you just have to work around a different design with slight tweaks. So let's have a look at what flow features we're looking at. So as far as geometries go, we've got the baseline case here, baseline case with the diffuser, baseline case with the flat floor, flat floor case with the diffuser. Now looking at the pressure contours, it's kind of hard to see big differences between the matching cases. They're, they're pretty similar. There's subtle differences in the amount of pressure on the exhaust. Like for example, in the diffuser case here, we can see that the muffler itself is at a slightly higher pressure than the low pressure that's being gotten from the airflow kicking around underneath the muffler. Um, so that's a potential source of um, drag problems and of also downforce reduction. But overall, the difference is very subtle as you'd kind of expect given we're only talking sort of like four kilos difference in total forces at 180 k's an hour. Now, when we look at the velocities and more specifically the near wall velocities, we can actually see a bit more of a difference forming. Um, if we look at the back side of the car here, we can see that the difference between the diffuser and the non-diffuser case, um, you'll have to forgive my cutout up top because it was just an old geometry, but the, the sort of attachment of the flow is in more of an upwards direction on the non-diffuser case than in the diffuser case. The diffuser case has gotten a weird shear effect going on down here. And the net result of this is, is it kind of blocks this rear wheel inside wake and the, the flow on the interior of the rear wheel from sort of passing up. It means that the flow over the top is sort of kicking down more around the back of the car on these outside regions. Um, 
And you can again see the exact same thing happening in the case with the floor. If we look underneath as well, we can see that in the diffuser body itself, in the floor case, we have ended up with a nice shear attach flow, um, nice attach flow in the inner vein particularly, um, and then we've got it on the outside. But the, the exhaust or muffler has really sort of screwed this up for us. It's ruined everything by sitting where it is. Um, in the non-flat floor case though, we've ended up with the diffuser actually has airflow over the top and underneath it, and it's just not really attached anyway. So it's not really doing much of a job and it is just adding drag. So we're really seeing the results of that poor diffuser design there more than anything else. Looking at the improved diffuser design on the realistic floor scenario, we can see that what it mainly has been doing is sort of drawing the air from this outside section, not the area that's been affected by the muffler. So basically this whole exhaust section, and remember that this is a worst case scenario geometry, it's likely that your scenario isn't this bad on your car. Um, but we are drawing from this outside bit where we can actually get nice attached air and it's not getting tripped up by any of this exhaust or the diff here. So we've got a nice flow attachment along here and that's getting driven up through the diffuser. Now one, that's getting us a little down force from our diffuser because we're getting a bit of upwash. And two, we're going to get slightly better extraction underneath the car, which is where that extra 11 kilos of downforce is coming from. Now I know these forces probably aren't seeming like that much to you guys, but 180 Ks an hour isn't actually that high a speed for aero. So the forces are going to be relatively low. And when we look at the outside, we can see that we no longer have that random upwash kick that we've seen on the previous one. And we're seeing just sort of linear shear. Now it's still, you'll notice that this area is still a lot darker than this area. So we haven't quite put in the free stream, which is why we're not getting a big drag penalty associated with having what well, on the surface of it anyway, looks like a massive diffuser. Like I said, this was just my first design attempt from having some CFD data. This is like you, with a few design iterations, you end up with much better. What we're also seeing is on the top surface of the diffuser, we're in training more sort of flow from around the wheel because we haven't fenced off the top deck anymore. So it's now getting kicked up and over, which is giving us again, more downforce. And this separation pattern on the back is now more similar to what we were seeing in the cut bumper case. So that's why we've got an overall improvement in downforce without a big penalty in drag. And just taking a quick look at the pressure field, we can see we're getting that lower pressure through there. The front's gonna be relatively similar. We'll probably get slightly better extraction, which is gonna work the front a little bit harder, but we're getting this low pressure here. That's where your downforce is coming from. So what are the key takeaways from today? Well, one, we can get more performance out of the diffuser than a floor in a realistic scenario. So my previous video is true and we can do it this time. Uh, two is that the design of the diffuser is very important to getting good performance and that's where CFD really comes in or you can do a lot of experimental testing if that's more your thing. Um, if you're looking for CFD testing, you can hit up www.jkfaero.com and check out some of the CFD packages available there, send off an inquiry and we'll get back to you real soon. So that's all for today. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to check out my other videos and subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button below and hopefully see you next time.